Hello friend, welcome to one of the most exciting episodes of our Summoner Progression Guide. This episode will be mostly a guide on how to defeat the Empress of Light in the day to obtain the Terra Prisma as a Summoner. I'm Zuzucorn and I aim to entertain you, encourage you, and offer you a place to call home. So subscribe now and join the Zuzucorn family. Last time we completed all preparations required for the Empress of Light daytime fight. I will go through my recommended loadout with accessories and show you my successful run as a pure summoner. I want to be really honest here, you'll probably take many attempts, unless you're an insane mechanical god like some people out there. Personally, I took about 30 to 40 tries, but I'll go through the tips, tricks and techniques using my one successful run. So let's begin with the loadout. For our summon weapon, I recommend using the Sanguine Staff, which is dropped from the Dread Nautilus. If you need a guide on how to get that easily, check out this video here. Sanguine Bats have one of the highest range of any summon, and their AI is probably one of the most reliable ones. So with this summon, you will have no problems hitting the fast-moving Empress consistently. Another choice would be the Xeno Staff, which is dropped from the Martian Saucer. This boss is difficult because of the recent laser changes, but I show an easy way to farm it without getting hit in this episode right here. The Xeno Staff never misses an attack, which makes it extremely reliable. However, its range is definitely not as good as the Sanguine Bat. Its damage output might be a bit higher, but the consistent damage at far range makes the Sanguine Staff the more suitable weapon. However, the Xeno Staff is definitely usable. Let's cover armor now. As a summoner, you have access to the Tiki set and the Spooky set by the time you challenge the Empress of Light. However, I strongly recommend the Hollowed Armor set instead. The Hollowed Armor might offer slightly lower damage output, but it increases your survivability greatly due to the Holy Protection effect, which allows you to get free hit. If you didn't know yet, fighting the Empress of Light in the day is the only way to obtain the Terra Prisma. However, that also means that every single attack that hits you will one-shot you. As a result, survivability is more important here, and the Hollowed Armor is likely your best bet. Let's cover our accessories. First of all, I recommend the Fishron Wings. These are a rare drop from Duke Fishron. However, they have high speed and are able to ascend extremely fast, which is vital for the Empress of Light. You can try wings on the same tier as Spooky Wings, but I do think that Fishron Wings are better. The Empress Wings are also pretty good. Next, we'll be using the Flying Insignia, the expert drop from the Empress of Light. This accessory allows infinite flight and coupled with the Fishron Wings, allow you to fly well and dodge the Empress's attacks. Next, the Master Ninja Gear is also highly recommended. This gives you a dash, which is great for getting out of a pinch. It also has a chance for you to avoid enemy attacks, so it's just extra free hits. We also have the Brain of Confusion, to give you even more free hits. Next, we have the Summoner Emblem for more damage, and the Papyrus Garret for more minions and more damage. All of our accessories are reforged to menacing, so that we can do the most damage possible and still have survivability with our dodge chances. Of course, summoning potions are a must as well. With that, we can finally take on the Empress. The arena I prefer is the open air, with no platforms to obstruct you. With our unlimited flight, having lots of free space is really helpful. I'll be honest here, I use the time configuration to set the time at dawn, because after you've died about 30 times, waiting really becomes a chore. I accidentally turned on the time freeze though, and only realized it after like 20 seconds, so that's why the beams look a little weird at the start. Anyway, this is my only successful run, and my mind was pretty numb at this point already so I didn't really say anything much. So this voiceover will have to explain things to you, I guess. I will leave the entire fight uncut and also show you how many times the dodges saved me. It might get a bit boring seeing a full uncut fight, but there'll be lots of ignorant idiots out there who think I'm using god mode or whatever. So you'd be surprised how many people are just salty with life. But enough with that, I can try to explain how to avoid her and what attack pattern she does. There are three main patterns for the first phase, which I'll label and show you on screen. The first pattern is the homing beams followed by her dash. This is the pattern she uses most often, and is usually preceded by an everlasting rainbow. Once you see an everlasting rainbow, just fly continuously to one side, and then fly upwards after a while to avoid everything. 
After this, she will either do the Sun Dance with a dash, which is pattern 2, or the Sword Attack with a dash, which is pattern 3. It goes like this, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 2, 1, 3, and so on. Just see which one she does first, then you'll be able to figure out everything. For the Sword Attack, just go in a small circular motion. It predicts your pathing, so don't do huge movements. With that, the first phase should be pretty easy. It's more of a warm-up phase. I'll just let the video continue along with all the pattern numbers and dodge counters. The second phase is where things get hectic. First will be Style 1 of Swords, which you can avoid by focusing on the middle, where the beams converge. Or you could just free fall and dash when you have to. That's followed by her Phase 1 pattern, then Style 2 of Swords, which you can avoid by going in a slow, gradual, circular motion. She will then do an Everlasting Rainbow, beams, and a Sun Dance immediately. So the moment she fires the beams, free fall to avoid everything. This is the hardest part of the fight in my opinion. Staying high will only get you killed by the Sandans. She will then do Style 3 of Swords, which is dodge in a circular motion as well. Next is a fast moving beam, then the cycle repeats with Sword Style 1. It looks more hectic, but if you look at it as a whole, it should be okay to dodge. Then it's the Phase 1 pattern, then the minor movement for Sword Style 2. A rainbow, followed by beams, then the sun dance immediately after. Then we have style 3 and the dash, followed by the fast moving beams and style 1 all again. The pattern just repeat. So if you notice, I'm getting really lucky with my holy protection buffs. There were so many times I should have died, but I didn't. Being a summoner means that your summons trigger the buff while you're a safe distance away, which is why I'm getting away with it more than I should be. As the fight goes on, you get more and more into the zone, so just enjoy the rest of the fight. So there we go, Terra Prisma obtained with pre-golem gear. Of course, if you use the Xeno Star for Duke Fishron, then yeah, whatever. But if you're good enough, you can definitely do this before golem. With that, we have obtained the Terra Prisma and can breeze through the entire game now. However, I will still show progression without it, so no worries, this fight is completely optional. Just to illustrate how strong the Terra Prisma is, let's take on golem. I'm being super sloppy with this, just cause I know we'll win anyway. But yeah, we're completely destroying him. If you get this, the rest of the game will be a breeze. But like I said, it's optional and you can still have smooth progression without it. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon too, so you won't miss the next episode of our Summoner Progression Guide. This has been Zuzukron Games. Have a nice day, and have a great week ahead. Bye bye!